Good morning, everybody. This is Aggie with Artist Heart Studio. How are you today? It's a Sunday morning. Oh, let me open my window here. It's a beautiful morning. Um, it's still very damp outside. And I'm going to get back into painting this garden gate. I did a little bit of work um, figuring out where the actual pickets go and um, came back in and strengthened up the contrast in the field behind the fence. So I made the um, it's, um, like a cool yellow green mixture, the highlight portion lighter and the dark portion darker. I think that's really all I didn't show you off camera. So, um, yeah, let's get started. Here's my reference photo. This is my neighbor's, down the street, my neighbor's um, garden gate. And those are fake flowers. <laughs> but that's okay. It's still very pretty. I'll try and make mine look maybe more real somehow. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's see what we need to do next on here. <clears throat> um, okay, oh, still waking up here. I might do just a little bit more. I'm looking at this and noticing the contrast could be um, brighter back here, and that's going to make it a little more interesting. Yeah, actually the sky is just a lot lighter, which, you know, we like that nice, light, bright sky. So maybe I'll do that. I'll lighten that up just a little bit more. How's everybody doing this morning? Please, um, if you could, somebody let me know if you can hear me all okay, just in case. And um, where are you watching from? Is this your first time watching me? I'm um, honored to have you join me. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Um, you know, sometimes these light areas of the sky have the tiniest bit of a warm yellow in them, and I don't happen to have any warm yellow in my, in my box. Um, but I've got some hands of yellow medium right here I can grab. Hands of yellow happens to be just a bit more mm, neutral. Oh, that was way too much. But, you know, let's try it. Yeah, way, way, way too much yellow. So anytime you got the wrong color in your brush, get it out and I'm just going to add a lot more white and this is very very wet And just that hint of warmth in there, I think, really helps. You can always put a glaze on top of this if it's too much. That's what I love about acrylics. It's just so forgiving. And maybe 
maybe I will grab a little um, blue. Can you guys hear me okay? Um, hmm. I don't see any comments. Well, oops. Oh, I didn't really get the yellow in there as I had hoped I would. I'm going to have to let that yellow dry and kind of go over it, but that'll probably work out nicely because it'll have a, an undertone of yellow. And it is a little bit of a strategy because there's going to be yellow in my main subject matter, which is the um, basket of flowers. So, yeah, I just can't keep messing with that because it's just not going to, it's not really going to cooperate right now. Just can't seem to get this light enough. Okay. So overall, I've made the whole sky lighter. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot better. You know, it's the kind of thing where it's um, it's comparative. You just don't you don't really necessarily see it until you can compare it. All right. All right, I think I'm gonna work a little bit on, um, let's see. Let me figure out the sequence of what I need to do here for a second. Um, and I'm gonna make it a white picket fence, I decided. Um, I think the background field is in good enough. Although, yeah, I, make, I, me I messed up these pickets. I realized they were too small. So I do have to fix this right here. So let's do that really quick. Sometimes you have to just kind of go around and double check you didn't forget something. We can get so focused that we, you know, don't even see <laughs> something right in front of us. You ever do that when you're painting? Uh. <laughs> it's driving me crazy that this canvas is lopsided. Okay, that's 
better. There are a few cute little leaves in there. I might put in. Yeah, that's kind of just give a hint that there's, you know, some plant life over here. And it's kind of fun to keep it abstract. Put some really cool greens in here. So that it really is gonna help, again, help the, um, the subject pop when I put it in. Okay. What that oh there's some really pale yellow yellow green leaves in here too you know I'm not sure what they are Probably those really broad leaf types of things. Just need a hint of them. And um, okay, that's a little too vibrant. I like it, but it is pretty vibrant. Hmm. <clears throat> I'm having fun with these colors, though. I really want, I do want to pull the eye back there. Definitely need to soften this. Okay. Yeah. A little more vibrancy in the middle ground. And I'm keeping some hard edges, that's okay. Um, right in here, this is even lighter, I'm noticing. So I'm just really refining my colors now because I don't wanna have to go back in and, and repaint <laughs> in between these pickets later on. It's a little bit of a pain. Oops, too much water on my brush. And again, we're gonna have things breaking that up so you're not gonna really see that. Of course, anytime you can maybe repeat a color, it's a, it's a good idea to do that. So I'm going to carry some of this up into here. Just creates that harmony. Okay. All right. It's going to dry a little darker, but I think it's going to be okay. 
All right, so once you've got that middle ground um, figured out, I'm gonna let that dry and I'll be able to, you know, put my picket fence back in. So while that's drying, I'm gonna work on this. And you know, stones can be hard for a lot of people, including me. <laughs> Rocks and stones. Um, um, all right, so, and this is, this is not easy either, all this texture in here. Um, you kind of have to simplify it, which I have done. And, you know, as we get closer to our subject, you know, our focal point, which is going to be this basket of flowers, that's where you want more contrast in your colors and you want more vibrancy in your colors and you want more hard edges. So maybe right around here, I will have some of this detail-y little sticks, but I'm not going to do it on the whole thing. I'm not going to do it out here on these sides for sure, because that's just going to make it too complicated for the viewer to know what to look at. So we manipulate the viewer's eye through contrast and hard edges. Those are the two main tools that you can use. So, all right. Uh, so I'm really going to squint at my reference and make sure that I have accurate values right now. And I'm seeing right in here, I definitely need to have this part accurate because, I, again, I don't want to have to paint the pickets over and over again when I put them in, which is going to be my next step, I hope. <laughs> so I put some really dark darks in here, straight black, and it, I, liked, I liked what that did because it it brings the picket fence really into um, the you know the foreground because of that depth we created, but it's a little too much black. And I'm looking at the value right here beyond the pickets and that's too dark. So I'm just gonna go in and find the right value on that. So I spend a lot of time um, figuring out the correct value in relationship to the values surrounding. Does that make sense? It's all about getting the right value. Color, everybody thinks color is what's really important and it is what we love looking at, but it's not, you can have the most gorgeous color in your paintings, but if you don't have the right values, your paintings just are not going to work. They're not gonna look right. Uh, all right, so let me kind of concentrate a little bit here and not talk so much for a couple minutes. And um, So softening that a little bit, and that is helping. It's all gonna look a lot better when I put the pickets in, of course. All right, so this color, it's it turned out so pretty on my printout. It's, it's um, I guess what it is, it's a blue-gray. That's what it is. And I love having a neutral gray in my palette. All right, now this is too blue. So to, um, I added a little bit of alizarin crimson, which is a very cool red that made it very purple. But let's see what that looks like because um, purple and yellow green, oh man, they look really great together. They are like uh, cousins. Yeah. I 
That's not a bad color. Now this brush is a little too wide for this, but I, I just don't want to get that persnickety and use a really small brush. And right away, just all these little brush strokes are bringing a lot of attention in here, just by the nature of them being little strokes. So that's probably enough. <clears throat> Yeah, I think I like what that did. And then sometimes I'll go back and look and see if my blobs all look the same size or have the same spacing, which I'm seeing right here, boom, boom, boom. So I wanna, I wanna break that up a little bit. You can actually start to do some stick looking strokes. So that's kind of fun. It's just suggestive. You don't have to go all out and put everything in there. In fact, you're, it's just, that's the purpose of art, you know, is to not put that much in there. Okay, so now I see a stone back here that is really light. See how light that is? That's as light as the sky up there. And um, I don't even have that stone in there, but it's gonna really help to, to put that in. So let's get that in there. I actually have a color here. This was an off-white. This might work. I'm gonna add a little white to it. No, oh, it's lighter than this. Let me add more white. And um, I'm gonna use a smaller brush. So um, one of the things I've learned from doing landscapes is that um, you have to kind of think in terms of planes and um, the ground plane, that surface is the sun shines directly on it. So it's the light hits it. So it's very light. So the ground is always one of the lightest things. Sometimes the ground is lighter than the sky. Good morning, Christine because light is directly hitting it. So that's why this started to look good once I made the light, once I made this ground plane, this middle ground, a lot lighter. Okay, um, so in the same way, this stone, this little garden stone, the light is directly hitting that, and it's very, very light. So sometimes it's just a good idea to compare, well, how light is that? Is it as light as the sky? <laughs> and it really is, you know? It's like, oh gosh, okay, I need to, I need to fix that. <laughs> so, I mean, in my photo, it's actually lighter than the fence. So let me lighten that up. Okay, where's this one gonna be? It's here. And then it continues over here. And then there's a little hint of one over here. That one there. 
Okay, that's probably good enough. And then of course I've got to put some of this color on some of these. And I don't have the color right yet, but it's okay. I'm working on the value right now. dry. Wow, these are really popping out way too much, but I, I will fix it. Okay. So it's definitely more beigey. So maybe what I'll use, it kind of looks like burnt sienna, but it's more neutral than that. So maybe I'll add some of this blue, gray, purpley blue. So it's a, it's a very, it's kind of a difficult, sometimes it's really hard to get the right neutral. And you just have to keep playing with it. So I mix small bit, bits of color up at a time. That looks a lot better. And when you paint these stones, if you're doing something like this, paint through the picket fence part. Don't don't try to painstakingly fill in that area cuz cuz I'm going to paint the picket fences anyway. And, you know, we'll let this dry and we might discover that it still isn't quite right. And that's okay. We'll add another color on top of it. And um, in doing that, you're going to get a lot of variation, which, of course, you want. You always want variation in your art. So how's everybody doing today? Oops. Okay, it looks a little better. Um, I think part of the issue is that there's more light pieces in my um, in the path. So maybe I will do that. I'll just add. Um, Oops, wrong, wrong blue. Messed up that mix totally. It's just the slightest hint of blue. It's not, it's a little. So I'm letting my brush get a little bit
So even though it's watery, it's okay. It's softened that a little bit. All right. I know this part probably looks very, very boring. Um, oh, the other thing. <sighs> this has a crossbar right about here. It's going to hide my little stones I made. Okay, and then it has, it has another crossbar here, but you really can't even see them. Okay, and it's got to go from here to here, which I should just grab a, well, maybe not. Okay. Yeah, I did good because the X is right in the middle. Yay, and then right there is where there is another crossbar. nice thing about chalk is that you can, um, you know, just wipe it right off. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to paint right through all those pickets because it would just be way too much of a pain to do it any other way. Oh, I'm blurry? Oh, am I blurry now? Oops. Maybe it'll focus, and then I'll bring it down and let it refocus. How about now, Christine? Is it still blurry? Maybe if I bring it up a little bit closer. Can somebody let me know if I'm still blurry? One thing I hate about Facebook is the delay. Um, okay, hopefully I've got... So here's a gray. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, oops, I had a little bit of that darn blue in my brush. And sometimes you can add, um, you know, brown. To a um, to make a neutral shadow, neutral white, grayed down shade. So 
sorry, I had to open my paint box again to get more paint out. Um, sorry if it's getting blurry still. I don't know what, hmm, what I could do about that. It's a little wide. Oh, and then there's this one here too, I almost forgot. Um, the only bad part about the chalk lines is that, you know, the grit of the chalk. Oops, got a little too fat. Okay, that's probably pretty good. Of course, we have to let that dry. Rinsing my brush out. And while this is wet, I can actually lift away some of this that I know I'm not going to need on here. I only want that to be in between. Somehow got paint on my brush. Oh, too much water. <laughs> we kind of want to get at this before it starts to dry. But that water will break down that streak of gray paint. You know, or if you if you want, you you could just let that all dry. And just, you're gonna have to paint probably two or three coats of white on the pickets to get them back. So, you know, there's always more than one way to do something. Of course, you wanna be careful because you got those in there now, you don't wanna lose them, but that really helped a lot having that, putting that in there. But try not to get too obsessive about it either. It doesn't have to be perfect. And of course, <laughs> you wanna be careful that the, the gray back part is dry if you're going to do this. All right, so let's see if I can start painting in some white of my pickets now. Kind of dying to cover up that. Let me put some more fresh white out. And I like to put my, I usually put my white in a straight line so that I can just take a piece of it out and put it over here, another piece, put it over there. Of course, I didn't do that just now. <laughs> But um, that weird noise, if you hear it, it's my dog, Charlie, right behind me. He always has to be right under my feet. Oops. Well. I'm 
using straight white right now. And this is a really, this is like a 3 16 inch flat. So it comes in really handy anytime you're doing, you know, straight lines like this. You would not use a round brush for something like this. Those two end pieces are a little bit wider than the rest of the pickets. I can't, um, can't really do that for all of these. I have to turn it this way. So just gonna do the best I can. Doesn't have to be perfect, you guys. You know, remember to keep it fun. And I like to work on all of the pickets kind of together so that I'm, I'm looking at the spaces in between as well as the width of my pickets. So, I mean, this is definitely, I would say it's a more advanced type of project to work on because of all these little factors, you know. Um, but I would, I would recommend um, working on something like this, maybe in your journal. Because it's, it's really, well, I guess I can use this width, seems to be. It's really um, pretty amazing how it, how it comes together, you know, when you layer in those things in the background and then paint this foreground like this, it just magically starts to come together because you've put in all that work. You know, and this is not, it's not perfect. I keep turning it. I, I know I'm probably going blurry. Oops. But, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's a garden gate for crying out loud, you know. Better if it's not perfect, right? So a lot of beginner artists um, can get kind of caught up in one aspect of something that they're doing. And you kind of have to think about more than one thing. So like, like I'm saying right now, you got to think about um, how wide is the picket and how wide is the space in between. <laughs> yeah, so as I'm doing each stroke, I'm looking at both. Oopsie, I just went a little too heavy-handed right there and made it a little too wide. Very easy to do that if you're putting too much pressure, so. Just takes a little bit of um, focus. Having your brush properly loaded also. Um, it's really easy after a while for your brush to get um, kind of a messy blob <laughs> going on or that it doesn't have a nice chisel point for you. And of course you need, you need to have your brush kind of chisel pointed is what I call it. And all that means is that it's, it's not a blob of paint on the end of my brush. It's Um, oops, getting wavy over here. It's starting to go. So it's not a blob of paint on the end of my brush. It's, um, 
it's controlled. And you know, if every time you need to chisel point it, you would just wipe it against the edge of your plate like that. Flip it over, wipe, flip it over, wipe, and it makes it come to a nice point like that. Um, all right, so that's pretty good. I'm not gonna get that obsessed about it right now. You can also do it this way if there are parts you need to fix. You can turn your brush this way. I think Charlie's kind of snoring right now. And uh, yeah, you need you need a pretty opaque white for this too, or or it, it can be pretty frustrating. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I can even um, put just a hint of some dark edges back there on the fence itself with a really fine brush. I mean, on that the crossbar part. I'm just gonna make a slightly maybe browner gray. Tiny bit of black. You know, and maybe wherever the bottom of that thing is, just gonna put the most subtle little line there and you'd be amazed how much just that little line, oops, that went a little off, is really gonna help. one I don't like. So just that little bit of adding those little lines in there. Of course I have to go in and, and clean them up in a second and I will. but that helps um, a lot, I think. This one's jumping out too much. So I can just go soften that. This one too, got a little too wide, just softening it. And then I wanna get it off of here. So my brush is just slightly wet. not going to worry about it much more than that. Now I do still have a little bit of chalk there, but that's okay. All right, so that's looking pretty decent. Now I'm ready to put in um, some these pickets that I lost. So let me close my box up. Good morning, Patsy. And, um, all right, so 
this is important to get this, at least the drawing in right. And I'm gonna use these posts as like a reference point, the height of these two, the posts of the fence. So I've got this one back here, right here. You can see it, and I wanna have the other one make sure it's lined up. So it looks like it would be right about here. It's next to this thing. So it's right about there. This isn't real accurate, this chalk. And then it comes down like this. So this line is not accurate. Okay. So... <clears throat> This post, oh, I gotta move it over a little bit. I'll be right about there. And um, I need another one here. Another one here, and another one here. Okay, so this is a post, this is a post, oh, yeah, this is a post. And I have to do this or else I get confused by my lines. Okay, there's a cross post. Here and the other one, we don't even really. See. It's a little lower than that. We don't. We're not going to really see it. I'll put it in there though. It's going to be covered up by all that grass. Okay. So we got that side. Now this side, and these are further away, so there's going to be more of them there, and they're at this angle. So I want to get that angle in first. It starts right about here. So it's about like that, I think. And, um, okay, starts here. You know what, I think I should put the crossbar in. That might help me. And it's right about here. Sorry, I know this is probably boring. And then there's a middle crossbar here. So just a subtle curve. This is going to be um, hidden by a bush anyway. As long as I get this hint of a curve right there, we're going to be all right, I think. Okay, so now <laughs> there, I've got one picket here. It's hidden behind this. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't necessarily have to have seven. I don't think I'm gonna fit them in. And I think it would be, um, frankly, it would suck all the joy out of it for me to have to put that many in. So I'm gonna try and work out I'm gonna have to just clean it up with my brush in between. So I'm actually using my brush to um, clean out the spaces in between. <laughs> Sometimes that's the only way you can do it, you know. Of course, I'm losing my crossbars, but that's okay. And again, what I'm trying to do is get you know the width of the pickets 
and the width of the space in between pretty even, and I think that's probably gonna be okay how I have that. Let me put the crossbar back in. This is really low down here. And then there's one right here. Okay. Yeah, that'll be pretty decent. Okay, now again, I'm making a white picket fence. Um, I'm not making it a brown picket fence. You know what's really bugging me is this color. <laughs> I want to put that in there really quick. It's kind of... Yeah, I'm filming. What's up, hon? I'm not going to talk now. So, I mean, I could just try my straight up burnt sienna in here. How long have I been on, you guys? Do you know? Anybody, anybody still with me? Actually, that's not bad. Maybe I'll put a little bit of this color in there too. Oh yeah, I like that. I think it's yellow oxide. It's either yellow oxide or um, yellow ochre. Oh God, that's so much better. That was bugging me. Okay, and um, that was just bugging me, sorry. Oh, it's gonna be so much fun when I can finally paint the flowers in. Yes. All right. Um, one hour. Oh, I should probably call it a. I should probably end it here. That's. I've been going a long time. So, um, yeah. Why don't we end it here, you guys? Did the blurriness go away, Christine? Thanks for letting me know that. Wow, this was probably kind of boring, but what do you think? Oh, I'm gonna move this out of the way. So far, so good. Oops, it's up too high. All right, you guys, <clears throat> I'm going to come back on tomorrow morning and continue with this. If you want to join me, if you're able to, that would be great. If you know anybody that you think might be interested in this, um, let them know. Tag your friends. And, um, oh, thank you, Christine. You're so sweet. Um, and I'll see you guys tomorrow morning, hopefully. Have a great day. Bye-bye.